Good morning, friends. Whoa, Summer, sit, sit, sit. <laughs> Welcome back to the vlog. So today we're gonna talk more about how to boost and increase your metabolism. And it's not in the way that we normally think. Last week I talked about the thermogenic effects of food. The types of food that we eat can make it harder or easier for us to lose weight. All right, so I'm gonna try to put in or get in a quick workout before I go to work today We're gonna do the bench. We'll see last time I died at 110 So I hear from a lot of patients that the reason why they can't lose weight is because they are unable to exercise Since COVID the gyms have closed down and so they gained a lot of their weight back but you know, remember what I talked about with metabolism, that your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure is made up of several things. So your me resting metabolic rate, which is just how much your body burns at rest if you were comatose. And then next is the thermogenic effects of food. And then after that is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And only a small, tiny, tiny portion, like 10%, is your exercise activity thermogenesis. So how many calories you burn with exercise. The issue with looking at exercise as a way to burn calories, it's not only a horrible way of thinking, but it's it's a horrible relationship with exercise you know you should never look at exercise as in like oh i need to do this to burn off the calories i ate this goes into the mindset of a binge restriction disorder so you're eating and then you're trying to restrict by burning excess calories by excess exercise and that's just not a healthy mindset so understand that there are benefits to exercise but not for the sole purpose of burning calories. And then so a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you know, when you build muscle, muscle burns more calories than fat. Well, based on scientific studies, muscle burns a little bit more, like six kcals per pound, as compared to fat, which burns about two kcals per pound. And you know how hard it is to put on muscle? Dude, I've been trying to grow this booty for over a year now and you know how much has gro it's grown zero <laughs> i don't even know if i've i probably put on like at most over the past year a pound of muscle it is so freaking hard and based on the studies they've said that maximally you can gain anywhere from 0.5 pounds to two pounds of muscle for people who are not taking like steroids and testosterone and things like that and then so if you think about it over a year and obviously it's not linear like this so over a year say you you gain like 10 pounds of muscle and that's being generous Okay, you, you, you gain 10 pounds of muscle, you are probably going to burn about 40 more calories in a day than if you had 10 pounds less of skeletal muscle. So the difference is not that significant. So I've been working on my compound movements, which are squat, deadlift, and bench press for powerlifting. So I just been using Tempo for accessories. Today we are going to do this upper body build chest and tries. It's kind of perfect for in combination with this. Secondly, there's something called the constrained energy expenditure model, where they found that the more that you exercise or the more strenuous your exercise activity is, the less you will move in your overall daily life. So say I go run a marathon, I'm burning a lot of calories while running that marathon, but then when I'm done with that marathon, it is very likely that I'm gonna be a couch potato and laying horizontal or even going to sleep because my body is trying to conserve energy because that is just way too much exercise for me. 
And we've also found that over time, the more that you say you train for marathon running, you don't burn as many calories as you were when you're doing a new exercise routine. So like the first time you run, you're going to burn more calories because your body's trying to adapt and all that stuff. But the more you keep going at it, the less that you will burn. Same thing with any new activity such as dance. Like I love dancing, but the more that you do it, you don't burn as much because your body is just like used to that now. I hope that makes sense. So how we boost our metabolism is actually increasing or going up to the full potential range of non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is sometimes on a subconscious level, like how much you twitch, how much you move throughout the day. For me, the easiest thing for me is setting a step goal because I know that, okay, in my mind, I got to walk this many steps. This is increasing my non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So I used to walk anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 steps, and then I increased it to 10,000 steps. So now the majority of the days, I will try to hit 10,000 steps a day. And I found that this is what has helped me lose the most amount of weight, surprisingly. Um, I just bought this from Amazon. Cute. I love it. I would never wear this out. <laughs> Probably just to the gym. But oh my gosh, it is so cute. I love that color. Okay. That's all. Time to get ready for work. Peace. We have found that our lifestyle dictates how much weight we will lose. If your job is physically demanding, then you will inadvertently use more energy than those who have a sedentary job, like myself. Where the disconnect comes is that just because some of us have this sedentary job, we believe that it is the reason we can't lose weight. Sure, it may take a little bit more effort, but don't feel discouraged by the lack of activity in your career. You can always introduce more activity. It is an active choice. I personally choose to park in the furthest parking spot when I drive anywhere. When I edit my videos, I choose to take 5 minute breaks after 25 minutes of work to walk around, to stretch, to drink some water, and then eventually I will need to go pee and then so I would have to go to the bathroom and then I would choose to go to the furthest bathroom away from me, usually all the way upstairs to get in those extra steps. These five minute breaks may seem like nothing, but they all end up adding up to something more. Remember that we as humans are weak. We tend to follow the course of least resistance. And even if we can use brute strength or force or willpower to make change in the short term, long term changes only comes with changes in our habits. The best example I can probably give is brushing your teeth. When you were younger, it is likely that you didn't want to brush your teeth, you didn't enjoy brushing your teeth, and you try to get out of brushing your teeth as much as possible. Now, it has probably become a routine. You wake up, you get out of bed, and you brush your teeth. It's something that you do without thinking if you should do it or not, if you want to or not, you just do it. So setting up these habits to move more, to stretch, to relax and recruit. Lastly, it is important to feed your body enough nutrients for it to function properly. The scientific study determined that your brain uses around 400 calories a day just to think, to control your body, to send and receive signals through its efferent and afferent neurons. When you don't eat enough, these processes slow down. Even your digestion slows down, which can lead to more bloating. So what can we do about this? We need to eat more. Eat back at your maintenance calories for a while until your sleep is better, until severe hunger is resolved, or until your hormones are regulating, your menstrual cycles normalize. There is no set time limit, but fixing that relationship with food is probably the most important thing. When you eat more, not only will your body function more optimally, but you will burn more calories. You will subconsciously move more, twitch more, 
Overall, it will make your weight loss journey more like a lifestyle rather than a bad relationship you have to suffer through on and off again. Oh, we're finally home. Oh my gosh, I look like a hot mess. Ugh, okay, so tired. I'm still on call, but it's time for dinner. <laughs> oh, so we have some leftover chicken thighs and then zucchini, grilled zucchini in like this um, bell pepper sauce. It is so good. It's leftovers from yesterday. Um, All right, so I only have about 5,000 steps. My goal is 10,000. So I gotta start walking around the island now instead of just standing here and eating my pirate's booty. I'm going to walk. Okay, so I changed, I brushed my teeth. They still need to wash my face. Stan is putting the kids to bed tonight. Um, but yeah, I... <laughs> I only have 6,701 steps, so I still need a little over 3,000 steps to go. I seriously was thinking about getting one of those treadmills that you put under your desk, um, but it's like $300, and so I kind of don't have that type of money to spend right now. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below and I am sure to answer it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.